Hello there. Welcome to Real Talk with Angry Sacramento Anastasia. Hey, salutations. Yay. Today we have a special guest, Richard Elbe. Thank you so much for being here. Hello. Thank you. Yay. And um, Richard helps guide people in everyday legal issues. And from what I've seen, he's amazing. So definitely check out everything. Mr. Elbe hosts the YouTube channel, uh, Supreme Decisions, and the Legal Minute podcast, which is, I've been told, found on every major podcasting platform. And except many, for XM Radio. Oh, so except, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> many other places, like too many to, to name. So definitely check out his stuff. Um, he's he's amazing. And if we have time at the end tonight, I'm sure he will take questions. So welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here. Uh, real quickly, normally the live show discussion topics uh, at, are usually anything that includes Anything newsworthy about racism, bigotry, inequality, and corruption in America. And that's everything, sadly. Um, the show's normally meant to be an opportunity for viewers to speak their mind, and it will be tonight as well, possibly closer to the end. And in an attempt to challenge the powerful system and speak the truth and learn the truth about systemic racism. And it also serves as an educational tool in cultural competency. I educate white people. I educate white people <laughs> uh oh uh oh i have an echo oh no how do we how do we switch that around again before there was like a trick to it of course i don't really oh wait did this do anything does that do anything no light yes yay me <laughs> okay awesome yeah because it's going on my end too oh can you see i've been over here adjusting stuff that's why does i keep sound... looking down does it sound better? It sounds better, yes. Okay. I didn't realize that you, oh, she didn't recognize you. Oh, that's funny. Thanks, T. It's Anastasia. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> Yay. It's the real her. But, um, so, you know, you know, I got a haircut. I had a haircut. It looks beautiful. Thank you. So I had to show my haircut, you know. I love it. Thank you. Yeah. Very, very pretty. You have, that's a mod, that's like a runway model haircut. You you do realize, right? <laughs> the only thing I know is when my little daughter cut her hair um, when the babysitter was there, of course, like 75% off. Okay. She, she'd been waiting for months to do it. She had to go and get a really, and so my oldest goes, you're a model now. And so she took her out and took pictures like a model. All right. So let's get us started. Enough, enough of my chit chatting. Once again, welcome, welcome for being here. Um, for those of you who are just joining us, our guest helps Richard Alve helps guide people in everyday legal issues. Today's going to tell us a little bit about how he got started helping people, and he's going to offer some general guidance about everyday police encounters. And he is a wealth of information, and he's going to talk about show of authority stops. He's got like the terminology. You guys keep up with me here. I'm looking up stuff left and right every time he opens his mouth because you know, <laughs> speak Latin. He knows stuff. Um, just to toot his horn for him, because I'm sure he will not. Mr. Richard Albe is the only person in Georgia to win the it's RICO RICO trial pro se sitting first chair. Let's give him a hand, which is completely amazing. Um, you know, like. He's good. And so you might think, what's that? I will quickly explain. And then I will shut up if that's possible. And anyone who knows me knows it's not, but whatever. Okay. Uh, <laughs> RICO allows for prosecution of all individuals involved in a corrupt organization. So it's um like for mob prosecutions. Um, yes. Yes. Am I explaining it right? Yes. And pro se is without a bar card. So let us get started. Uh, I want to make sure that ch double check the engineer to make sure that oh he says we're good. All right, and I want to start by asking you: Can you, Richard, and do do you prefer to be Miss? What do, what do, what should I call you? Not late for dinner. That's I know. I knew you were gonna say that. I saw. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm actually uh, Richard's fine. Richard, okay, because I want to be respectful to you, uh, at least while you're listening. Just kidding. Okay, <laughs> joking. How did you 
tell me a little bit about how how did you get started in this line of work and and you're let me just clarify you're not a, a an attorney uh right. juris doctorate bar bar holding card member not at all so yeah tell us tell us tell us uh well i will i always tell people i was kind of groomed into this because my father was a master mason and all that good stuff and if anybody's seen the movie malcolm x that was my you know baptism and fire you know so to speak like writing the bible writing you know the dictionary so i have an extensive vocabulary and then as i grew up i was always I'm, i wasn't a good person you know i sold drugs uh you know handguns and all the other silly stuff you did not I speak even about that often um so <laughs> being and then again i'm six four i've always been the big kid in school big kid around the neighborhood so you know, I don't smile a lot. So a lot of it was I got a lot of aggression because I was bigger than most of the kids. So I started getting my police encounters, so to speak, when I was like 16 years old. Oh, wow. But the funniest thing about that was the whole thing was um, whenever I was trying to turn my life around, it was a police officer who helped me do that. Whenever I went to prison and came home, it was a police officer that helped me get my first job. So a lot of times when you hear me speak, it sounds anti-cop. And it's far from that because every Thanksgiving, I'm spending Thanksgiving with a cop. He's my uncle. A lot of my friends are police officers. I want them to come home safely. However, it does not change the system and it does not change their training. So the kind of start that I had was pretty much being to the point to where like, you know what? I can't keep going through this. So I, like I said, I was kind of groomed to kind of like, you know what? I don't believe that. I got to see that. And as I started reading and started pushing back, my brother got into some trouble and I got on the internet. That was, which is the worst thing to do. But I ended up doing some stuff and I helped him and got into some other stuff and I helped some other people. And then all of a sudden I was like, okay, let me start getting this right. If I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it right. Right. So right. as I started digging and digging and digging, I was helping this person, helping that person, helping this person. Then all of a sudden it was like, now you gotta help yourself. And you know, there it is in my lap. Wow! So that's just the short, that's the short version. That's I love it. That's it just, <laughs> and you took an interest in it, and then you realized you were no, I no, I hate this. I actually, <laughs> but it was it's a form of defense because I wanted I just want to be left alone. That was the whole thing because again, Ooh. this is a normal traffic stop for me because even in Atlanta, from the age of sixteen to forty, was a traffic stop. I'm getting pulled out of my car. I'm going face down to the concrete. I got a knee in my back and a gun to the back of my head. That's for a tail light being out. That's for speeding. That's for jaywalking. That was normal. It's like I didn't realize it was different until. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Anastasia. So, you know, it's interesting that you say that. And what a lot of people don't understand, even with Black Lives Matter, if you cannot separate police brutality, from police, that's a problem. If you feel the need that when we say defund the police or abolish the police or you know distribute funds elsewhere, that's the problem because you don't understand or have the depth and breadth to understand that police officers should not be militarized as if they're in Iraq or Afghanistan. A person shouldn't die at a traffic stop. A person shouldn't die during a welfare. You shouldn't have no knock warrants because as we see in these no knock warrants, especially when it pertains to poor white people and black people, it never ends well. So I appreciate you saying that. And, and, and I just wanted to say that to people to understand the difference between the two. That's like being married and not being able to separate domestic violence between marriage. Thank you for, I'm glad you and clarified that. Cause we, we do obviously like to have- I, wanna, I actually wanna people. build on something she just said Absolutely, too. go for it. She was talking about militarizing the police. Here's the one thing that was funny to me. Everybody spoke about the George Floyd police reform bill where they were talking about reallocating funds, not defunding the police. In that bill, they did not 
have any section of retraining. I read that bill line for line on a live show. It's on my channel right now. It probably has 13 views or something stupid. It also has, at the end of it, it is like in the last two paragraphs, you're going to give someone that's untrained, uneducated, and a grenade launcher. What are you doing with the grenade launcher if you're protecting people? Who are you protecting? Who, what are you protecting us from with a grenade launcher? If you're, It's the equivalent, of, as my brother used to say, giving a child a handgun. You don't know how it's going to end, but you're going to end up on the news. And that's exactly what that does. It's disproportionate. If anybody, like, this is the thing, like, I don't know if um, Angry Soccer Mom told you, but I just retired out the military in 2018. <laughs> so we are taught on disproportionate force. There's, you shouldn't bring a grenade launcher if somebody has a, a knife or a handgun. You don't do that. And But the issue is that person that bought that grenade launcher and killed maybe about 15, 16 people, all they have to say is I fear for my life and that's collateral damage. And in this country, as we know from being in Iraq and Afghanistan, killing civilians is okay. As long as maybe, just maybe you got maybe who you wanted to get. So when we're talking about the 1033 program, I like to tell people that was under Obama. That was under him. So don't think all of this stuff started with Trump. And I'm not a Trump fan. He's trash. All of them <laughs> yeah. are trash. Okay. But yeah. let's let's give them they just dues that there's no reason you should have an up armor tactical vehicle that I know I rode in in combat zones to police the people. There's no reason for that. And we know why, because you said there's no training in there. Why fix a system that you designed it to be like that? So when we're talking about reforming the cops, you cannot get good fruit from a rotten tree. So you have to completely, and it has to be consequences. The great part about that is um, when I was asked about that initially, in the podcast that I did exactly what she's talking about, I talked about the I, I I'm gonna I'm gonna screw this up, the differential okay. association of action. I actually talked about that. And when I was reading it, I said, This is a military script. I read it off. How does someone that's protecting this country against someone who has an AK? who is having these grenade launchers don't have the same liberties as someone policing someone on the street. I also spoke about, you talk about a, you should look at police reform as a hostile takeover. Because with, with a hostile takeover, because the easiest one that I can tell people is when a hostile takeover comes, over, comes in, they actually gut everything out and they build it from the ground up. California governor decided he was going to do that. The the amount of the what did what did they say? The amount of applications dropped 95% in one month. When they put requirements on being a police officer in California, when mm -hmm. they put training as a mandate in California, when mm -hmm. they put education as a mandate in California, the applications dropped tremendously. And here's the funny part, because I always tell people that do the police apology to me. Is I say, okay, when we look at a cop and they're angry, what do we think of? Oh, that's the guy that used to get bullied in the school. That's the girl that didn't, didn't nobody liked her. Okay, but now she's a cop. It's terrifying. But, but again, you're telling me to trust that person. Well, that's those are the type of people, trust. but those are the type of people that gravitate. So there's two types of people that gravitate towards things like that. Po people that are impoverished, and bullies or people that got bullied. And that's just point blank and simple. I went into the army and believe it or not, angry soccer mom applied and got into the, the police academy ugh, um, because of poverty. Mm -hmm. That that was it. Did I want to be a cop? No. For what? Did I want to be a soldier? No. 
but I knew this was my way out. And this is well, why the system. Know. That's what we do right. here in America. That's our system. It's for scarcity. So when you see these people, as you said, they're going, and then let's not even talking about the gangs, white supremacist gangs that in KKK skinheads that go and the military has actually made it easier for you to be a white supremacist, to be a part of these things and stay in the military, just like the cops have. Yeah, well, the, I mean, the system is absolutely working as planned. And, and here's the crazy part, because just like she was talking about being in a game, I did the um, podcast to Officer Kelvin Dingle. One of the police officers that I, well, actually two of the police officers in Atlanta, because I only did Atlanta one year. One of those police officers was an actual hitman from, the, um, what is that, the Gangster Disciples. Another one was a coke dealer for the Crips. These were police officers. And I'm only talking about March 2020 to March 2021. There were 19 police officers. How many cases did you hear coming out of Georgia? Two, three? I mean, the, the yeah. a profession in its in and of itself, um, no offense intended to anybody, is is marred with with. I mean, if you look at uh, spousal abuse alone, it's they're off, leading the, they're off, leading the nation in it off the charts. Um, there's a reason um, when you can do whatever you want with with little or no training and impunity, and yeah, you do the math. It's this isn't rocket science. For me, when you join. I mean, I'm sorry, I'm just going to say it. You can disagree with me, obviously, you know, just my white woman opinion here. But when you join an organization that started off as slave patrollers in the South and really hasn't changed its culture all that much. OK, it's morphed it to make it a little harder to see. It's gotten a little more sophisticated. But seriously, when there's a blue line or a blue wall and everybody knows about it, that's the corrupt. I'm sorry. That's like open the secrets out in the open and we all just kind of accept it you got issues it's it's going to be a problem and the crazier part about that is i actually talked about um the chicago mayor and at the time the police superintendent mayor rahim allowed police to lie mayor rahim lobbied for police to be able to destroy ever um destroy the complaints against them after 60 days he lobbied and supported Eddie T. Johnson when he supported multiple police officers, not only go going into the wrong houses, not only cutting off body cameras during these raids, not only interrogating children, not only putting women out in the cold in their underwear in the middle of the night, not only him lying about his actions, he supported other cops attacking cops that was blowing the whistle. When I brought that up, I was threatened by the Chicago police. Yeah, it's it's the but open it was, secret it that no one. Funny. I didn't go to that. Chicago because it's too cold. I don't do cold. <laughs> you didn't go to Chicago, but you went to Las I didn't Vegas. Go to Chicago. Uh, yeah, you Chicago. happened to go to Las Vegas. He was telling yeah, me. Yeah, Vegas is hot. <laughs> Vegas is always hot. You know. The, the, the issue. The casino and everything, but anyway, but yeah, but the those issue friends, that we have to look at is some people don't want equity; they just want the changing of a whip. And they believe that because you have a black person as a cop or a Hispanic person as a cop or Asian person as a cop, that automatically they're going to empathize and have compassion for people that no, And it goes all the way back to the training and goes back into indoctrination. We're all so indoctrinated. You have to start to at the lowest level. What, what do they say? Occam's razor? Occam's razor, it, the simplest, you have to change. And what's going to happen is, is like you said, once they start changing those trainings, once they start re having repercussions, yeah, you're going to weed those dudes out. Because that's not what they want. They don't want to have. Not at all. Actually do the right thing. And, and there might be some who do, but I'm sorry. You're in an organization that is fundamentally at its core corrupt. And the context of most of that is the fact that not only do they want to continue doing this, it's a source of revenue. The simple being is I did a video that was blocked, like literally 
YouTube refused to allow me to upload it. And it was a playoff of Amanda Ruffin's propaganda, where she spoke spoke about the programming of how we are we are programmed to believe police have power, but we forget there is a context and there's a hierarchy. Why? Because the police took an oath to protect us. So that means they're our servant. The prosecutor is voted in by us. That's why they're our voice. The judges are voted in by us because they have a totality mentality, supposed to have a totality mentality in taking care of us. So that meant even the, the, the public defender or the agent that you hire to defend you, you hire them. They were free. Everybody that's there in the courtroom, you're paying. But they want you to believe everybody in the courtroom is above you. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that programming is dropped down, dropped down. And then here's they use Gestapo tactics to make sure you don't, you know, I'm not even going to get to it. But I did a podcast where I talked about, I spoke We're about. We're going to talk to you. Go for it. Okay. I did a podcast where I spoke about the um, perceived lie. The perceived lie. If the cop is allowed to lie to you, the prosecutor doesn't care about the lie that's being told, and the judge don't give a shit either way because it's all about money. That's where the 95% comes from because you're programmed to just go ahead and pay them. Why? For convenience or out of fear? Absolutely. Because when you're living paycheck to paycheck, that's why it's the war on the poor. Absolutely. Because if you look at debt collectors, debt collectors are going after people who can't pay, and they're getting 75% of income. Like, how does that happen? You're getting money from people that can't pay. The police are doing the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Or the policing system is doing that exact same thing. Yep. What I was going to say, and the federal government is helping them. Absolutely. Because what they do is, if you got a certain amount of stops, and depending on what stops you get, like DUIs, you get federal grant money for that. So if you stop a certain amount of DUIs, the federal government gives you money for those stops. So at the end of the day, it's a debtor's prison. They're making money off of you in the private prison system, the fees, all of these things. And then it doesn't stop. Say you go to prison. You still got to pay restitution. Yep. That goes into voting. Oh, you can't vote until you pay restitution. So right. now it's back. And it all, and for me, it all goes back to voting. Yep, they stop voting, voting rights, right? It's yep. it's and allocate um allocation of resources because Absolutely. when you go to prison, you go to one of these little funky little you people, build the population of that town, right? And they get money, and then when you come out, right? You still got to pay restitution. Say you're on parole, you're still paying money. So you're paying for your own slavery at this point in time. And if I could jump in really fast, all that we're talking about on this program and in the videos and on my channel and, you know, is it's the same thing. It's systemic racism combined with capitalism on freaking steroids. And it is ugly, really Absolutely. ugly. Capitalism on steroids, money, money before people, poor people are criminalized, all of them. They're, it's a crime to be poor in America. You Absolutely. will be punished much, much worse. And it will, I mean, just think, you go to prison for a day and you didn't even do anything. You lose your job. You, I mean, you could lose your kids, your house. It's my God. It's that goes you're not into even the guilty convenience. yet. Yeah, it's that like, goes into the convenience. It's, and so that you have this pressure. I mean, it's, it is, it's a finely tuned system where, you know, so anyway, I just wanted to jump in there, but go ahead. I'm gonna, what I was going to say was about Khalid Broder. Okay. Khalid Broder okay. is a perfect example of what happens to black people. Well, one of them, I'll say it like that. Can you tell people who don't know much about it just because we have a lot of... Right. So Khalid Broder was accused of stealing a backpack. Yeah, that's a really they sad story. To, they sent him to Rikers Island and he was there for two years because he couldn't post bail. He's like a child, right? really. I mean, he was He's young. a child. Uh, two years later, he killed himself because of they had him in solitary confinement. He was getting beaten up because he was so small and he just mentally couldn't take it anymore. He was tormented Sandra, and tortured. Right. Taking, Sandra, taking a backpack, allegedly. Right. And then later on, 
Oh, it was like, oops, maybe he didn't take it. Whoever put that report, all of them should be in jail or a wrongful death suit. Sandra Bland, perfect oh, example. Perfect example of what cops do. And the simple fact, she's dead now. They say she killed herself. I don't believe that shit at all. At all. But and the crazy that happened. No, I was I was gonna say the crazier thing is last year, I actually went down and I had to stop. I was doing a podcast that dealt with the innocent people that were executed, not people that could have been innocent, people that were executed that was knowingly innocent. DNA proved they were not possibly there. You talking about black cops or or the death penalty? I stopped. At 103 people. Can I just jump in? Are you are you talking about via cop or the death penalty? Which one are death you talking penalty. about? Because we, we do have stuff a on system that. of absolution Absolutely. that is completely fallible and falsely through the entire process. Don't even get me started on that. It's... And and what's funny is I was I'm, I'm gonna get into some real stuff. I was helping a young man a couple of weeks ago. I was helping him put in some some paperwork. One of the things that I, I, it was just amazing to me. He put in something that is supposed to be ingrained. And it's simple. It's codified in almost every state that I've looked. It is the right to remain innocent. He put in a revoke all presumptions motion. The prosecutor lost their mind. It's codified in their stuff. The prosecutor got upset with him for actually using it. Not that he couldn't. Is that the jury de facto? I mean, that's just not what's done, or the guy was pissed because oh my god, he missed the rules. Hold on. Remember, remember the tier. We have the defense that doesn't vigorously defend as they're supposed to. We had a prosecutor who doesn't care about the lies that they're putting in front of us. Then we have cops that don't know law at all. And then you have a judge that doesn't care. So when you actually exercise that right to be innocent, you are a problem. Absolutely. I am a problem because I can, I actually was, I was arrested one time and it was funny as hell. They put me in general population for one hour. Uh Oh, (laughs) I bet I know what you did. And I was like, okay, cool. Everybody come over here to the table. (laughs) I knew it. That hour got me put in solitary until I was bonded out. Now, you brought up a great one, Anastasia, where you were talking about those that, the young man that could not bond out. People get upset with me because men lie, women lie, numbers don't. People love to preach the prison reform bill that Donald Trump signed. When I actually broke it down to the amount of people it actually helped and that, those that it actually freed, it blew their mind. That can't be right. Well, I'll tell you, go look it up. It's not hard to see. But what most people don't understand is we have 2.1 million people that are incarcerated. 840,000 of those people are there because they haven't um, been able to make bond. It's criminal. That is a crime. I'm going to say that one more time. 840,000 people, 43% of the people that are incarcerated in our country are there because they cannot make bond. Not because they're criminal, but we're programmed to believe because they're putting on an orange jumpsuit that they are criminal. When they come out, now they're spending time because, again, that's why they ask for your resume because there's a gap in it. You got a month gap. Why weren't you working? Oh, I was in jail. Oh, you're a criminal. Because even even with, um, I always always give kind of things that I can relate to. And one of my favorite rappers is this dude named My Son. He spoke about, they don't call you slave no more. They call you criminal. That is how they control you. They control you through fear. They control you through those Gestapo tactics. They control you through the exact same things that they tell you you can't do. Controlling black bodies is what we do. So so the question is, you talked about the bill. But from my understanding, a majority of people are are at state prisons. Yes. Versus federal prisons. Absolutely. Now, listen, listen. Absolutely. But listen. Now, you're at the federal prison. A lot of times they were given points 
for if you had went to college mm -hmm. or community service and these things that are still linked in to privilege like mm -hmm. okay what's his name what's ivana um trump's husband i mean ivanka trump's husband's jared, name jared something his dad was in federal prison yep right, right right but the simple fact of the matter is he had money and he was able to do certain things because of that privilege so what do you think as far as that go because that bill that he wrote was for federal prison yep not the state prison so and it was, and to build on to that the reason why it helped so little people that's part of the reason but it only it went back to a certain year and then it only went back for certain crimes it was very exact it was one of the most specific bills i've ever seen in my life because if you read one most of them are vague because again they can be interpreted any kind of way right. that bill was very specific specific crime specific time now, that's my why question it benefited is, so few people now my question is mm -hmm. what those crimes from predominantly white collar crimes or blue collar that's because most of the time when you do a white collar crime, you're going no to time. federal. Mm -hmm. You're not going to state prison. So you want to speak on that? And most of what was in that, they were dealing with nonviolent. They was low, um, what do you call it? Low possession charges. And it was something else. Because you had to have it was it was it was a couple of nuances. But again, like you said, very few people fit into that small group. Did, did he make like that? Said, did he make that for his friends? Level, maybe his friends. I mean, that's what I was yes, thinking. When he made yes. it, I thought, you know what? Exactly. what are you making this for his friends? And it just so happened to help out some other people that was in there. Because what was amazing to me was it was 30, I think it was 28 people that was actually released for marijuana. They were in federal prison for marijuana, not large quantities. But they were in federal prison for marijuana. Now let's not talk about those people that they sent back to prison. We, yeah. <laughs> some of those people that see, some of those people that they let out, they lobbied to put them right back in prison. Now, and and notice when she talked about that, these were nonviolent, minor crimes that they were in federal prison for. Because a lot of people get upset with me because I spoke about Mike Vick. I said, do y'all know Mike Vick spent a year in federal prison for a state misdemeanor? Understand Can that. Can I even say this? Go ahead. Michael Vick went to jail over a dog. A state misdemeanor that a he dog, never had a contact with. But a dog. But we have people that kill human beings. They get nothing. The guy that killed Laquan McDonald. Mc, oh my God! Don't do that. He he just got out. He killed a whole three years. person. Three years. He killed. And Michael, right. No, he did not serve a full three, did he? He didn't. And no. they still hate Michael Vick. Now, and 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 I'm gonna build on that one. Let's look at the compensations. You have dog owners that got more compensation for their dead dog. And families of the cops, they shot their family members. Mm -hmm. Michael Brown got one point five, I think, million dollars. We know half of that is going to the lawyer. Yeah, a dog owner got one point three million dollars for a dog. Absolutely, we, we like to make it crystal clear who we believe is is at the bottom tier. We couldn't Absolutely. get we couldn't get we couldn't get the anti lynching. Which some people say is like a double jeopardy. No, because there's people still being lynched out there. We know of 10. There is we actually, and there's an actual bill right now in Alabama and one in Mississippi in the in Congress right now. Right. So not anti-lynching, it's to allow lynching. Right. We can't get none of that, right? But we can get a federal law against animal cruelty. Absolutely. This, Absolutely. You know, like I like to say, and I, and I hate to bring it up here because it's really kind of off topic, but you know what? It's really kind of on topic. We have a white person problem in this country. Absolutely. We have a white person problem in this country and it has to do with morals and values and, and how to act human. And yes, that makes people upset, but it's still the truth. 
Absolutely. Black people don't care. We, we, we don't care. <laughs> Absolutely. We don't care. We don't care. Now, um, I know you got. I know you had another question for me. I, I we oh, went I on some, even jump else. in. Jump <laughs> right in and say, speak your piece, sir. Oh well, yeah. It's with me. Um, well, I got started helping people because that was one of the things that I love doing. Now it's it's more of a mission to actually get a greater understanding because I've helped people with um, divorce. I've helped them with child support. I've helped them with um, criminal cases. I've actually had a couple of cases in Virginia that um, dealt with getting a gun dismissed. Um, I've actually worked with a couple of people that videotaped um, a cop planting drugs on someone and then charging them. I've and I, I I've got a stupid. I think I told you this story a couple of days uh, when we talked the first time. Mm -hmm. Me and my me and my youngest son, he's ten years old. We were in Dallas. I normally try to keep him shielded from all of this, but I you know I've given him the. This is how you get home because he's ten. And he's he's big. He's a big boy. You know what I'm saying? He's about he's about five five, and he's like 170 pounds right he now. He doesn't look ten. No, he look like ten year old. So. We were we were sitting down. We were in Dallas, waiting for our, waiting to leave out, coming back um, to Georgia. And I'm talking to a cop, and we're having a good conversation. The cop turns around, and he looks at me, he goes, "Well, you know, you got to understand, we have a dangerous job." Now, as soon as he said that, I was getting ready to respond. My ten year old son goes, and I said, "What?" You know, because he turned, he did the puppy look like he was confused. He was vexed. Mm -hmm. He goes, "If your job is dangerous." And we should understand, he said, isn't that the same thing as getting on an airline? Isn't the pilot's job dangerous? Isn't the window washer's job dangerous? And he went and I, I just hugged him because, again, out of the mouths of babes, the understanding that he had just from a side conversation. Mm -hmm. Now, later on that day, somebody sent me a video and it was just to help, you know, you know, help them with their case. Mm -hmm. And my son, he's on my shoulder. And he, I, I'm not paying attention to him because I'm watching the video. And he looks at me and he goes, Dad, why did he do that? Why did, he, why did that cop grab him like that? And it hurt me because he's he's still in that innocent stage. He doesn't understand the stuff that I'm saying to him. Well, 10-year-olds are in fifth grade. I mean, that's Yeah, that's yes. Grade. And he goes, he goes, why did he do that? He said that guy put his hands up and laid down on the ground. Why did he kick him and then start yelling at him? Mm -hmm. And then I... I, I I, I kind of bit my tongue because I don't want to say, you know what, because he's black. He, But my son came to that conclusion himself. Mm -hmm. And the sad thing is, out of the mouths of babes, you put up a video today. And I'm one of those people I try to hear for the background. You put up a video where these two young men were fighting, these two teenagers were fighting. The Hispanic guy, mm -hmm. young black guy. Cops immediately run over and tackle the black guy. Tackle the, the, the Latin black, dude down. Don't the handcuff him. They handcuff the black guy. But if you listen to the background, background, all the children said the reason why they did that was because of his skin color. Yeah, somebody yelled it out loud in the middle of the video. And oh, they did that because he's black. They yelled it out. The, the, fa the fact that they saw that, mm -hmm. it's the most amazing thing. But then it goes back to, it. you'll often hear me talk about this. Because, again, one of my partners, I asked him. You know, why did you participate in the blue flu? You didn't you thought it was okay for them to snatch two college kids out of their car because they were filming to protect the man? You thought it was okay for them their arms to be broken? You thought it was okay for a young lady to be tased that was going to school that was sitting in traffic because you were shutting down the city? You thought that was okay? He then looks at me and goes, They were punishing us for doing what we were trained to do. Now, when you look at a video Whoa. where they are intentionally leaving this fair-skinned young man, having him the ability to he sit even, down and going like after the one with dark skin, <laughs> when you're weaponizing my skin, what am I supposed to do? Because I love when people say, well, if you comply, why, yeah, don't, right. why don't they just, they, all you had to do is comply. I did a, I did a uh, markup, again, Walter Chamberlain, Walter Chamberlain Sr. He complied. Not only did this man 
who complied with the police. They were doing a wellness check. They kicked open his door. They politely left out the fact that they were threatening the neighbors. They politely left out the fact that, that not only did they kick open the door and they turned off their body cameras, they used racial slurs. They went in, they tased him, shot him at close range with a shotgun beanbag, not once, but twice, knowing this man had a heart condition, then shot him while he was laying on the floor with his hands behind his back. They convenient for good all that, but they also didn't pay attention that he was on the phone the entire time. Comply. Can can I just say this and interject in what you're Absolutely. saying? So, you know, I think I have rethought what you're talking about. And I'm going to say this reason why. Absolutely. How did you find out that you were black? They told me. Probably the same way I did, where mm -hmm. somebody told you that didn't love you. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So your child found out about the cops through seeing vicarious trauma. Absolutely. So what I'm saying to, to, to people out there, are we doing a disservice to our children by not telling them? And the reason why I'm saying that is because we know. I know your mom might have told you, don't go in there and embarrass me in front of them white folks. Why don't you want me to embarrass you, mom? Because I know if one of them white folks do something to you, all of us could be killed mm -hmm. or you could be killed or we all could go to jail. Mm -hmm. Right? Absolutely. I tell my children, you're not them. Those white kids can do whatever they want. My daughter, she wanted to go out one time, Halloween, with one of those purge masks on. Oh, absolutely. I said, hell, if you ain't. Mm -mm. You know why? Because when they see you, they're going to shoot you. Because mm -hmm. you are a perceived threat. Right. So what, I'm saying is, I older, and what I'm saying is, for me, with my kids, I tell them, you are black because the first time they found out was in kindergarten and somebody spit in their face, telling them that they was the N-word. So I don't do that anymore. I let them know who the cops are, where the cops came from, what you do with the cops. And that doesn't mean that, doesn't mean that you, you just you know, let them say anything they want to. I don't believe in that. Absolutely. But I also tell them that, look, this is what they're going to do. This is what they're going to say to you. And this is what you need to say to them. And make sure you have these tools around you. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I feel like we tell our kids, don't run in the street. We tell mm -hmm. our kids, don't talk to strangers. Don't take candy from anybody. Don't eat at everybody's house. Make sure you have clean underwear on. Why should we not tell an occupying force? An occupying force in our neighborhood. That right there is not your friend. They look at you as the enemy. And you know That's what's crazy? I I actually I actually found out a couple years, I want to say about two or three years ago, that I actually have a form of PTSD. Now, not to kind of play on any type of military stuff at all. But yeah, I do absolutely. realize that I have a trigger and it's because I've been arrested more than 50 times. Abuse can be any PTSD. You know what I mean? yeah. It's been more than I can, and it's, and it's almost laughable because what happened was I was watching the movie, The Hate You Give. Every scene in that movie where that man was speaking to his children, I've had that. I have six kids. I've had that conversation. I when you have it hurts me to have to tell a 10-year-old how to get home. It hurts me when my 16-year-old is on his face in a good neighborhood in his own front yard. It hurts me when my child is actually fighting for his life because he's down the street and he could possibly might be a suspect. Or whenever I I had a I had one of my relatives. He was charged with murder. This is pretty much the only murder case I've done. I was supposed, if you let the news tell it, I was on the run, but I was sitting in the courtroom and I was pretty loud. I, you know, I'm pretty hard to miss too. 
I'm sitting there and I kept telling my grandma, like, what are we doing? Why do we keep doing this? This is stupid. So I go up and I grab the DA, literally. I, I reached across because he kept walking away from me. I reached across and grabbed him. And I said, look, I'm getting ready to hand this to the judge. DA appointed me my relative's counsel. He then goes, I said, okay, here's the long and short. What are we waiting on? I said, because I'm getting ready to file this motion for speedy trial. What are we what are we waiting on? He goes, Well, there's a couple witnesses. I said, again, why are we waiting? That's your job. And I said, you know what? Give me the list of the witness that we're looking for. He hands me a list, but he hands me something that he didn't admit it didn't intend to. It was the, the witness's statement of the description of the suspect. You're looking for a fair skinned male. Five foot six or five foot nine. My relative is my complexion, dark, and six foot two. Oops. I'm like, okay, so we're looking for a light skinned five foot nine dude, and you got a six inch height discrepancy, and you're thinking that's okay. I was like, dude, yeah, we're not we're done with this. So I go in and do what I do. He gets released on that, but he's a knucklehead, so he got in trouble for some other stuff. But you know. Can't, can't can't save everybody. Can can I say this to you? And I had to tell because I'm a part of the uh, uh, Virginia's um, legal redress team. Okay. And I had to tell one of our clients: these people are not your friends. Absolutely. These people are not working for you. That DA and that prosecutor already told what they're gonna do. Absolutely. They've already done that. And you know, to go back to what we were talking about, that cop propaganda. Mm -hmm. They put movies and stuff like Law and Order and Rescue 911 and even cops out there so you can see an, a stylized illusion of what cops do. Absolutely. And that's the thing. Like, I, Don't get me wrong. I, love, I don't like CSI and I don't like uh, special victims. But the original Law and Order, I like that because I think that was more real. You had two drunk they were cheating on their wife, and they were doing things that was wrong. But if you notice, all of them like blue bloods and all this other foolishness, they actually look like they was trying to help victims. And we know mm -hmm. that that's not the truth. Um, Anastasia and um, Richard, I don't know if like this is something in your experience or not, but as a kid, as a white kid in a very, very white area, we were indoctrinated and taught. Police are your friends. Wave mm -hmm. to the nice policeman. Wave to the nice policeman. But they are your friend. So mm -hmm. they're your friend. Mm -hmm. But that and this is, is how it, as I'm talking like yeah, three years yeah. old. Mm -hmm. They that are your friend. You know why they're your friend? Because they keep those bad Negroes. Absolutely. And those bad people out. So you can have, so you can have the panacea of beauty that you have. Yeah, I, there's always, yeah. in anything that you have, there's going to be a mm -hmm. dystopia for one person mm -hmm. and a utopia. We Whoa. allow for white people to have their utopia. Well, it's a brainwashing because they don't say, oh, except it's only for you. And so as a, a right. child raised in the era of colorblindness, we think, oh, cool. I mean, that's how it's, 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 I'm not saying that we're innocent in this. And when you grow up, you figure it out and you're like, oh my God. But I mean, I think I, I did not know a single solitary thing. When I was 12 years old, I told you my, my dad took me aside and, and Richard, I didn't tell you, sorry, I just told it really fast um, that we, I have two sisters really close in age. And we used to let the boys, when they came over, they jumped the balcony in the back of my house because we lived on the kind of edge of a cliff. And my dad came up to me one time. I didn't know what he was talking about. He said, I want you to tell Dan to use the front door. And they knew that we always had the boys jump over. It wasn't like we were getting away with anything, but that's, it was just fun to be sneaky and jump over the balcony. And I, I was like, but he'd never said a word to me before. Well, Dan's black. He said, and I said, why? I was like, you know, I was like, yeah, like why all the boys come over the balcony. He said, point blank. If police see them, they'll shoot him. And that was my introduction to racism. And I was like, like mind equals like 
what? And that was my introduction. Welcome to racism. But this is why, this is why defunding the police will never happen. Absolutely. Because at the end of the day, the police are not there. Just like you, the watch riots. If you look at what the genesis of the watch riots was a black person was somewhere that they weren't supposed to be, which is not in your neighborhood. In white space. Call that white, white, well, white well, space. Well, I wouldn't say it was white space. I it mean, was. Right. No, but what I'm saying is it wasn't even white space because white space is wherever they're at. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Even in a black neighborhood, if a white person it is, that's their spot. Right. So at the end of the day, like I was saying, they're never going to be defund the police because you've already indoctrinated this society to believe that we are inherently violent, even though there's no proof of that. I should be more afraid of you as a white woman because Absolutely. white women have destroyed entire towns. With one little oh, lie. lie. One little tiny lie. One lie. lie. That's all it takes. So, and, and let's think about it this way. It still goes to the, the, the illusion that white men don't kill 80% of other white people or white women don't kill 80% if you're a white person, 80% of the time, you're going to be killed by another white person. Absolutely. Not by me. Absolutely. That's why That's why it's called proximity crime. Proximity crime. Right? You're going to kill who you're around. No, this is purposeful. We we are indoctrinated and we are like, okay, we don't even question it. You know, here's a, here's a, here's a funny, funny fact. Most people have no idea why universities are set up the way they are. You also have very little clue of why the universities have very, quote unquote, low crime. It's unreported because a, what is, what is that? It's, it's not scientific. It's, uh, what do you call that? What do you call that whenever they're doing the, it's a socialistic experiment. That a they social did. experiment? Yes. A social experiment. They were talking about, and this comes from the early 30s, early 30s and 40s, because again, that's why the housing is called project housing. You put people in a close proximity for a long time, guess what happens? Crime elevates. Mm -hmm. Guess what college students are? They're broke. They're hungry. So you're telling me at all these universities with these people living in close proximities, there's no crime. Yet you deliberately put neighborhoods together with close proximity housing and telling me the same exact setup it's a has set. an elevated, um, elevated crime stat. That's why we have campus police. Probably. Which is I mean, BS too. Right. They, 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 they take over and, you know, you know the you know the story. It's, we could just, but, guys, we could talk forever about this. It's like. No, this but is, just like Nikki okay. just said. The crime is unreported by campus Absolutely. police. Absolutely. Because it's the same like the military, where mm -hmm. we have stuff that soldiers do, but they don't go to the cops. Absolutely. We know about it. They may get it because you got UCMJ. So that's anytime I think about what they what these people are doing, the fact of the matter is, is that they've already practiced on black people. We know that the Nazis got what they did to Jewish people from America. A lot of times they try to make it seem like it was the other way around. No, boo-boo. Nope. They got and that from Nazis us. learned from us. They learned from Not us. Not just Jewish people. Black people. The Right. I mean, God, well, you saw my last video on that. Right, that right. Millions That's just the, other people. The thing about it is the projects exactly what it was. Let's see what right. happened. Absolutely. Let's see what happens. And, and and the fact that black people have no power in this country, it is what it is. But just like I tell people, look, read the book. It's called The Color of Law. Oh, absolutely. That, that book, The Color of Law, will show you how the government did all the segregation, denied black soldiers loans, oh, denied black soldiers the GI Bill and all these things that culminate to what we have now. 
some of my black friends, I talked about it extensively with them. It's, it's, it's just, it's just freaking heartbreaking with what they did to them. I mean, Absolutely. it's, you can't recover from, I mean, we have gone about systematically institutional wise, carefully and very purposefully made sure that black folks and brown people over time, I mean, I, I, I find hidden history. I, I, that's one of my specials I really love to do. Anything after emancipation is my thing because that is, oh my God, that's when everything started happening that people have no clue about. And it was all well, on purpose. They also and don't talk they, about the failure of reconstruction. Anytime you hear something, because I remember it was Candace Owens and Killer Mike. And you probably seen okay. it was like a revolt. It was like the yeah. revolting. And he was saying how during Reconstruction, we was doing this. But they never point out that Reconstruction was put in a certain way to fail. Absolutely. To that Black people could not do it on their own. Just like with the Freedmen's Bank. I think that's what it's called. Freedmen's Bureau? Put, huh? You say Freedmen's Bureau? The Freedmen's Bank. There was a bank. Oh, oh bank. A bank. Okay. That I see what you said. Right. Former yes. enslaved people put their money into. Yep. And Frederick, they put Frederick Douglass in, in charge of it after they had mismanaged the funds, after they already knew that it was going to fail. Took all those people money, and now who do you have to blame? It's the a black setup. guy. Mm -hmm. It's a setup. Everything that they do with us is a setup. That's why I always tell people integration was the worst thing that we could have done, especially when we did it. Absolutely. And most people, you know what, it's the, it's one of those things that I, I often watch comedians. And one of my favorites, Dave Chappelle. And he talked about the actual coming together. And he was he spoke about it simply as being if you go to another country, that's who they are. If you come to America, we're all segregated. And it's and if we go back to these old sayings, because again, each one of those have a time and a purpose. Separated, separate, we are, we will fail. That's the whole point. Because if you look at the wealth gap, because it is a gap for a reason. If you look at the amount of people that make less than $17,000 a year, there's a bunch of people there. From 17 to 40, there's a bunch of people there. From 40 to 100, it gets started to get skimmed. From 100 to 150, it is almost ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Just, just $50,000 changes the aspect of current America. And when you look at those that make less than 17,000, who are they? The poor and disenfranchised are minorities. The poor and disenfranchised are even army vets, military personnel. Because I actually worked for a company. I'm not gonna say the company name because it was a great company. The company dealt with VA mortgages. I would go and sit down with these soldiers because I would get them out of the bad mortgage that they have and put them in a better situation. And all of them had the same question. I had the exact same response. Is this going to harm me? And I would tell them, do you think the government will put anything else other than the VA in your way to hurt you? And all of them said, nah. But the simple fact that the one place that's meant to help is actually not a means of helping. Because I'm 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 from El Paso. I was there during the mass shooting. I had a friend that died in the mass shooting. Are you talking about the one at Fort Hood? Oh, no, I'm talking about the Texas. one at Walmart. Walmart. Oh, at the Walmart. Where, I was there. With and I'm gonna say something Fort else Hood. too. Where the three jackasses right. came up there and they arrested one and say, "Hey, look at him!" But you mm -hmm. forgot that you and showed us a picture of all three of them. Right. You forgot that you forgot about this picture that you don't put up already with all three of them. But you want to show them one. Say, okay, yeah. About, yeah. Anyway. My friend Anna, my she died in that that mess. But the thing about her was she came back, 
she had severe PTSD to the point where she could not work. She got to the point where she was going to the VA every day, so she couldn't even keep her job. She lost custody of her child. What pissed me off was she would literally, I would go check out on her and she'd be crying. And in the midst of her crying, they gave her a fucking dog. A what? A dog. D -O -D. Support, an emotional support her. dog. Oh, oh, okay, okay, dog. Like, hold on. I have an I have an actual issue. You Can give me a dog? a dog. That's your help. And then they tell her she's not a hundred percent. She can't work, but she's not a hundred percent. Yeah, well, but I mean that's a whole a like, the, the the lack oh, you of me something else I have to take care of. Mental, yeah, really. Mental health. And I, you know, I you support. will have I have a documented illness. But you give me something else to take care of. But I can't. I can take care of a dog, but I can't take care of my child. It's insane. It's. it's but insane. that's because even um, Sierra Blanca, most people have no idea where that is or what that is. It's where I tell everybody there's nothing down in Sierra Blanca except for desert, the border patrol, and the detention center. That's it. There is also a little village. And it is where we find the homeless vets that need a place to stay. We take them down there. They're growing their own crops and all that good stuff. And we have all, and Epstein, what is, I think that's his name. That's the one with the Amazon. He's actually helping fund that. But we're putting these vets off the street because they are the forgotten people. But with this is the exact same country that'll tell you, well, I must come, I'm all, all for the army, I'm all for the Navy, I'm all for the armed forces, but yet you do nothing about it. Bezos, that's it. Be Bezos. Bezos, Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos. Yeah. Can I can I tell you this? Mm -hmm. What your friend is going through is what I went through a couple of months ago. I I have PTSD as well. And so I told him, I said, hey, I'm having episodes. I need to see somebody. I need some medicine. He said, well, you can come here two to four months. Wow. What? I said, do you understand what I'm saying? I don't want to hurt my husband or one of my kids. Oh, well, we have to make you an appointment. So what they told me, I had to go for an emergency in order to get that mm -hmm. taken care of. So I know exactly what you're talking about. We and you're right. Health care. They okay. don't care. And the thing okay. about it is with that situation, when you're talking about the, the percentages, it doesn't go the way everybody thinks. You have to have a lot of stuff going with you. And I'm 100%. But that's because I had this, that, that. And it doesn't even calculate calculate what's wrong with you. And now, I don't know if you know it now, I know this is off topic, yep. but now Biden and them is trying to rework the VA and how they calculate your VA benefit, your disability. Right. So if they if they say that you got better, they're going to take it off now. Yeah, I was about to say they're going to drop it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, this, this country does not give a flying fuck about mental health. The, no. or, I mean, it's, you guys... Health's for profit. You think they give about mental health? That's not, even, it's not a profitable thing. And even at the context of that, part of the things I did prior to helping people in their legal help is I had my insurance license. I actually stopped because I started learning of all the countries in this world, only four of them advertise to their citizens. And only two of them actually have for profit. One of them is North America. Right. Just let that sink in. All these countries around the world with health care. North America is number one in advertising to their citizens. For profit. For yeah. profit. We we profit off, wealthy people profit off your pain, suffering, and yeah. death and dismemberment. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> and we do that on our channel too. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But yeah, okay. I guess we can kind of shift back. because I, 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 I do that every now and then. I ran a little bit. 
No, no, you guys, you guys. <laughs> I, I, I'm ranting a little bit, but um, but no, at, no, no, at, at the end of the day, this is real for this is real for a reason. We just have a, a slight yeah. script. But yeah. No, but you know what? Because I told you this is why I don't like doing live shows because I had to I had to catch myself a couple of times because I I get triggered by certain little things. <laughs> I'd have been to stop this live show with me. This, yeah, this one would have been cut off. Like, <laughs> but at the end of the day, a That's lot of us have life. no idea like the simplicities of our police encounter. Cause the first time we're engaged or have any contact with our legal system is through a traffic stop. Today, I actually, um, I did a, what they call a red pill episode where I spoke about, no, it's not just black. It's not just white. It's not just Georgia. It's not just Atlanta. It's not just, you know, I actually, matter of fact, I'm a, I'm gonna flip it around a little bit. Boom. Can you see it a little bit? A little closer, a little. Yeah. Yeah. And that was just a few because that's the back page. That's not even the front page. Tell us what that is because we couldn't tell exactly what it was. What it is was I was talking about the police encounters because I often get slack because just like I told you, I had him put in a motion to revoke all presumptions, which meant he had to be presumed innocent, which means they have to show cause. I've done a video which talked about it is against the actual principles of the ABA for a prosecutor who cherry picks a case to prosecute a case without probable cause. Probable cause only comes from a crime, which means in order for someone to be involved in a crime and to have standing for that crime, there has to be an injury. Again, people hate when I say that because those are not my words. I can read the actual court case for you, but I went into that because I was talking about that's how I started. My first videos on the channel are called Police Encounters because our first introduction is by a beat cop pulling us over for a traffic ticket. 75% of Americans, that's where, when we get introduced, that's where we're at. Now, what I spoke about was, I tell people, get the get the um, warrant application, get the search application, because I've actually, cause we, just like I talked about earlier, they're not hiring anybody smart. That's actually a Supreme Court case, Jordan B. Prince. Can you tell us about that? Because I think a lot of people will be very interested. Okay, Jordan B. Prince. Jordan B. Prince was um, Jordan. I forgot his first name. Jordan actually sued the city of um, Prince, Philadelphia, because their police department would not hire him. Right, right, right. I know Jordan. This. Jordan was actually a well-educated man. He had a, I think his IQ was like one forty or something. It was something ridiculous. It was, it was high. It was high That's enough. Good IQ. So. He kept applying and they kept denying him. He couldn't figure out why. So when he sued, <laughs> it came back the range that police officers across the country higher was 104 to 107. Now, just like we talked about the social experiment with the ho project housing, 104, 107. If you look that up, IQ of 104 to 107, not my words, look it up. You look up jobs. It says fast food, police officer. Now, would you want someone working at McDonald's handling a grenade launcher? Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So, okay. So this is the way I feel about that situation, right? Go ahead. McDonald's workers, service workers, it's a classist way to think like that. Now, I understand what you're saying. No, I understand what you're saying. But what I'm saying is, you know, my first thought is like, well, just because somebody works at McDonald's doesn't mean they're stupid. No, Those no, are no. starting jobs for some of the best people, people ever. I mean, yeah. That, exactly. Yeah. What, are we oh. at, what are we looking at whenever we're looking at people that are working at McDonald's? They're kids. They're, that's his first job type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they do, they do I mean, how often no, are we looking at a child them. in high school say, oh, he's really intelligent? Working at McDonald's. I mean, it, it takes a slant. You, it, it takes a slant. I think that we've indoc been indoctrinated. It's like people in the Army, right? Right. When I first joined the Army, joining the Army was not the thing to do. Only, quote unquote, only dumb people joined the Army. Right. So Especially from up north. Like, why would you do that? Right. Now, when those wars came around, that's when they was like, oh, I'm proud to be an American. The army mm -hmm. is the best thing. Yeah, because you need a soldier. Yep. When the country came around and shut down, it was 
oh, they're they're essential workers because you know I need my Burger King. Yep. But on the rest of the time, you want to shit on them and not give them a living wage. Right. So this is my thing. When it comes to people that work on service, I don't look at them like that anymore because at the end of the day, whether that person is a teenager or whether that's a grown person, that person probably got two or three jobs. That's probably their second job according with their other job because they're not getting paid a living wage. A living wage right. when we're talking about when we're talking about they're trying to hire these service we are trying to hire 13 year olds Absolutely. i think it was stated in so that's why i'm i'm real careful because i don't want to be an elitist and be like well the person that working at mcdonald has right. well i can't make a goddamn burger can you right and, and Anastasia, I, I get that so what yeah. we can do is I, I knew you. I knew you'd pass on that. Um, for for the sake of of the point you're making, let's speak to the spirit of what you're trying. Okay, to Okay, cool. Right. Say. Right. What the context of it is when you have someone based on the Supreme Court ruling that's saying we're not going to hire anybody that's smart. You understand? Right. You understand why? Yes. yes. Because I actually did a. I spoke about this with Robert Kennedy. He spoke about it in '68. Why? Because it was affecting white men. Right. He was talking about taking education out of schools from the yep. kids, 68. Yep. He was yep. talking about not allowing men to be fathers. He was talking about white men, 68. Yep. He was also talking about the ability to provide and be a husband. He was talking about white men in 68. Yeah. Now, whenever I read that off, a lot of people, I was actually looking at some of my comments, and it was funny because they thought I was talking about something that happened uh, the past couple of years to people that look like us. But at the same time, when you're speaking about the the Jay Z line, I dumbed down for my audience and I doubled yes, my dollars. Yes, most yes. people miss that. Yes. The reason why he's saying that is because you can easily control someone that's not intelligent. When I then changed it around, when I spoke about it in the in the form of police officer, and I'm gonna say this too, I have a ton of police officers that follow me. None of them have ever corrected me. I use the term attack dogs. They are trained attack dogs. Because but you're right, thing. though. But you're right. Trust me. In the military, that we tell soldiers, we didn't pay you to think. Thank we paid you. you to follow orders. So I know exactly what, but go ahead. So when they're they're trained attack dogs, that's why when you see them, they're they're the ones that are getting into the situation and escalating it. Why? Because they're looking to intimidate you. They're trying to figure out what it is that gets you to give them that revenue. They are highway robbing you. Mm -hmm. So whenever I tell you, okay, this is their procedure. Procedure does not change from state to state, city to city. That's why I'm a problem because I know the procedure. I sat down and I studied the principles and context. I understood the difference between a decision and a precedent. I understand how now to apply not only the precedent, but those that are within that decision. I made sense of what is applicable. That is a problem because, again, I talk about police officers because, again, you have someone that's unintelligent, right? Or not high on the intelligence spectrum. Let me use that. No, They're no, I agree with you. I, you, you okay. have to, because this is the thing. It's just like anything. They're going to put you, they're going to put you in certain MOSs Absolutely. based on what you make in that test and what your aptitude is. So, to be totally honest, that is not the first time I heard that. That they that that story that you're talking about, that's mm -hmm. not the first time I heard that. That they don't want people that's too smart because then they're gonna ask questions. Absolutely. Like, Wait a minute, hold up. The, they don't want a thinking person, they need somebody that just acts. Now, here's the great part. So when you have someone that can't think for themselves, how are you gonna have them give a actual story in a police report? You know how you do that? You give them stock language. I'm in fear for my life. Why? Because that happened in North Carolina. That happened in New York. That happened in Florida. Stop that resisting. happened in California. Stop resisting. Stop Philadelphia. Resist. Right. Stop it's resisting. Right. Stop yeah. resisting. Again, the, yeah. those are, if, if it's not stock language, if they're not trained that way, why is everyone across the country using it? We watched the Las Vegas video. He said, I'm in fear for my life while walking up mm -hmm. to someone with his hand on his gun. 
his action, his body language did not speak to that. Just like when she spoke about Michael Brown. Oh, I was in fear for my life. You were running behind this man. I often talk about the, um, I actually showed a video which YouTube took down. It's a um, police officer. He's holding this man's cell phone and said, there's no way that you can mistake a cell phone for a gun. I put up 13 people that were shot by police officers because they were holding a cell phone that they thought was a gun. Mm -hmm. Now, I actually put up the definition of imminent. Because again, if it's not attack dogs, if it's if it is someone that can be that, you know, I use the word deity. We're trained to deify these police officers, making them infallible. Mm -hmm. If they are infallible, why don't you want to sing the things? Why can't we ask for the police report? Even how um, Mallory V. Hogan states that a police officer isn't even smart enough to determine what probable cause is. That's why they need your consent or they need a written. Um, let me calm down. You either need a written okay. statement. Do it. Do it. Tell okay. it. Tell it. Because at the end of the day, nobody is masking that these are not intelligent people. There is Supreme Court precedent that state and back up everything that I say. People get mad about that. That's why I'm a problem. That's why I was able to stand there in a courtroom and the former DA of Fulton County. Yes, I'm not going to say her name, but you know who it is. She stood there in the court and said, no, he's sitting first chair because he knows more law than me. There's nobody that can walk in and just say, you know what, I'm going to take a back seat to this dude. I, every time somebody had to say something, she turned around and looked at me. How is a dude that didn't go to school, that's a felon, that's been out here, been to prison, how does he know more than a person that studied and had a job as a Fulton County DA? How is that possible? He knows more law than me. But this is my, but th th this is the thing. The other thing about it is you're a person that's around guns every day. Absolutely. You're telling me you're a person that's around guns every day and you can't, but let's, but let's not forget. We had people that were shot over a sandwich. Yes. A sandwich, a teddy bear, a doll. You had people that you, you talked about complying and everybody keep, seems to forget about Charles Kinsey. Oh, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You Charles Kinsey wasn't what even the person about. looking for. He was laying on the ground. They shot him in he the back. He even asked the officer, why'd you shoot me? Why did you I, shoot I don't me? Know. And then remember know. what else they said. I wasn't aiming at you. Yeah. I was aiming at the autistic man with a truck. Remember Thank that? You. Thank you. Yes. Yep. Because he was laying on yep. the ground. Charles was laying on the down. ground like this. Like completely, yeah. you couldn't do anything. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna I'm gonna throw something in there. I watched, I finally, it, it took me years, but I found out the cop that killed Tamir Rice was out and had another job. Mm -hmm. So wait a minute, up the I street. finally, I finally wait, had an opportunity. Minute. Okay. Wait a minute. He went and got a job up the street yes. and was on a semi-pro football team. Yes. Yes. I finally sat down to watch the video and listen to the 911 call. Now, the context that goes into this, because again, there was a lot of stories. The caller said, there's a child. Caller pointed out that there was a child mm -hmm. with yep. a toy gun. Yep. The caller said, there's a child with a toy gun. Officer knew there was a child with a toy gun. I the radio yeah. dispatch said there was yep. a child with a toy gun. Officer gets there. Tamir Rice is sitting down when he sees the police car. He stands up and starts walking. Tamir Rice hits the ground before the police car stops rolling. The officer's statement was, I yelled for him to sit down and stop. You were shooting at this child through a, through a window out of moving car. Before the car stopped, he hit the ground. If you are that afraid of your life, you need to find something else to do. Get but, another freaking job. But when you go to sue them, you're the problem. When you hold them accountable, you're the problem. So whenever I've, again, I've had my life threatened countless numbers of times. 
by these people that I'm supposed to trust. I've had people come up and say, because even my brother, my brother, he was, he actually, well, my brother-in-law, he actually had lost his job because one of his partners didn't know that we were related. And he said, oh, I can't wait. If I see him, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. My brother-in-law said, hey, if something happens to him, I'm going to think you did and I'm coming for you. But that blue wall didn't help him out. It never helps black cops up. Prime example, Muhammad Noor. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> you already know. Prime example, the shooting of Jeremy Martis. Yes. Because those cops was black. So what are we talking about? Prime example, the black guy, remember the black guy that called himself infiltrating the BLM yes. yep. and his old cop friends beat oh. his ass? And hold on. Here, here's the great part about that. I'm glad you brought, oh my God, I'm glad you brought that up. The funniest thing was, they were on trial at the same time Derek Chauvin was on trial. It, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh. They were on trial the exact same time David Chauvin was on trial. Nobody knew about it. They actually, all three were acquitted. Do you know what their reasoning for beating him was? They were asked directly, was he breaking the law? Nope. Was he doing anything rambunctious? Nope. Why did y'all jump on? He was there. That was the reasoning. He existing, was there. Existing. That was it. No, he, he was there. Not that he was doing anything. Right, that he, he existed in the, in the space. I mean, that's. That was it. And the context is, because even now, everybody, I, I again, this is something I talk about. They're telling you who to hate, when to hate, how to hate. They're saying, Ooh. look at my hand, look at my hand, my look at while the trick's going on in the other hand. Everybody is sitting up here. We're looking at Ahmaud Arbery's killer. Oh, the the text messages. The text messages are so horrible. We're in week three of the Derek Chauvin, the um, excuse me, George Floyd killers. We're in week three. Why don't we hear about that? Isn't that I what was we're just about, I, was just re I was just reading that one of them said he thought George Floyd was fine. And I, here's the crazy part. Yeah. What they all f failed to realize was that one of the ambulance dudes didn't cooperate with him and had his radio on but again why are we not hearing about that they're telling us we got to hate these races here but they're hiding the other ones over here because again that point of deity that point of fear that point of programming because these police officers still got to go somewhere else now i actually one of the things that i'm doing this year is i'm um, I can't remember the senator's name. I, I'm horrible at this. That's okay. But she actually sat down and she's like, look, we're going to put together a list, a blue list of police officers that have either been fired or have done, um, that have lied in open court, that basically have done some something they ain't had no business doing, putting them on a list so they can't do the Tamir Rice killers job and leave from one place and go to the next. Or the young man that was in Philadelphia. He got fired for shooting a young lady in the back. He got rehired in Philadelphia and 15 else. minutes after being on the job, yep. he shoots another young man unarmed in the back. Yep, yep, yep. And he's still employed. This is how we roll. I mean, I put a bunch of specials on, on my channel with this is how we roll. It's on, I mean, it is absolutely purposeful at every single turn. Can we, can we talk about, we don't even have to go that far. Derek Chauvin and the, the Asian cop, Tao Tao. Yeah. Both of them had like 10, 12 Com complaints. Okay. I, I, did, I did a video on that. Else. I did that. I did a video on that. Um, Tao had three federal lawsuits at the time of the George Floyd. Most people did not understand that um, Derek Chauvin and George Floyd had a previous relationship. Yeah, I put a they video on that. Together. They worked, worked together. together. Yep. And he had an issue with Floyd because he had arrested Floyd twice before. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, most people didn't know about all that. Yep. I put a video they, on it too because people don't know the details and details matter. With these and when you're looking at these things, but again, that's where the problem lies is because you want to stay plugged into what they're telling you. Mm -hmm. Because one thing that my father actually told me, and I actually got reintroduced this when I went to prison. Young man told me, he said, don't watch the trick box. I was like, trick box? What is that? He said, the TV, because it's going to tell lies to your vision. Mm -hmm. 
And as you and what one of the things that I pro, kind of program myself to do because I always I have a checklist for discovery. I always tell people because it's the it's it's chess, it's not checkers, right? It's the art of war. You hear me speak of that often. One of the things that I tell people is not only look for what's there, look for what's not there. Absolutely. Because here's the thing, and even G.I. Joe, knowing is half the battle. If I know a cop can't tell the truth, guess what I'm going to attack? His credibility. If I know that a prosecutor is not going to turn everything over to me, I'm going to attack Brady Wise. If I know, because again, these are things that are inherent. This is the actual law. And what goes down is the, the you become a problem when you know and apply. Because knowledge is not power, it's potential power. Applied knowledge is actual power. And, uh, because when Ben Franklin said, the pen is mightier than the sword, which is actually a credit to somebody much earlier than him, he was talking about the application. Because even the Supreme Court's um, case states, any waiver of a right must be done in writing well any exercising of a writing of a right must be in writing as well because it's the offer and acceptance part of the contract when you break it down to the simplest forms it sounds stupid because i always tell people it's a citation it's a contract they're making you an offer don't sign it if you don't want to accept the offer don't sign it now i put up a video because everybody, oh, you can't do that. That's a lie. I put up a video. I didn't say it. Another guy look, that looked like me didn't say it. It was a white guy who had been practicing for 30 years. Said, no, you don't have to sign a citation. It's just a promise to show up. Either you show up or you don't. Yep. And most people, and you hear cops say, well, you have to sign it. Well, that's a forced contract, which actually voids that contract. Right, right, right. Now, you, now, you know... You know, in the law, and this might segue into it, but can you talk about a little bit? And, and I don't want to, I don't mean to cut you off, but there's so many questions and some things I want to ask you. Um, ask is away. This, is this some, um, is this part of what you can offer that an attorney can't offer? Is the act? absolutely, yeah, could you maybe speak to that a little thing. bit to the people who I always tell people the most powerful person in any room is yourself. You are the most, I did, a, I, I read the poem. It's not our it's not our darkness that we're most afraid of. It's our light. There was a reason that is because we are so afraid to shine because there becomes expectations with that shining. So when you realize how powerful you really are, you become a problem. I I turn that light on for you. I show you with a switch at. Mm -hmm. You empower people. You it sounds like you empower people. It's absolutely. Like because I know the game and how to play it. Because I always tell people, the nature of the beast doesn't change, just the players. Because the same thing I've done in Georgia, I've done in North Carolina, I've done in Texas, I've done in California, I've done in Illinois, I've done in Wisconsin, I've done in Idaho, I've done in Maine. It doesn't change. Because the law is the law is the law, period. So, and people always talk about, oh, Latin is dead. Latin is dead. Go to court. Go to court. That's all you got to do is go to court. See how dead it is. Because it'll be your ass in jail. Now, when we're looking at these contexts of it, because again, just like I talked about, <laughs> my my brother, he was actually the, my older brother, the asshole that was, if you ever watch any of my first videos, us sitting in the courtroom, the asshole is sitting next to me, the one I don't like, that's my older brother, which got us into all this stupidness. He's sitting to my right, on uh, my left. My brother on the right, he's real tiny. He just he got on my nerves because one of the things he said to me every morning when we got up to study was line upon line, precept upon precept. And the whole context is, the, you know, dot your I's and cross your T's. Close the doors behind you. What I do is Everything that you do has a process, has a procedure. And as the military lady, you know exactly what I'm speaking about. Because everything that you did from the way you got up out your bed to the way you made your bed to how you took a shower to the way you put your socks on, all that had a process and a procedure. That's how I do law. 
line upon line, precept upon precept. These things don't change. Because even, even now, it's understanding what can and can't be done. I can say things to you, and I can have you move in a means that an attorney can't because piranha don't eat piranha. Because everybody in that courtroom except you has a bar card. Everybody in there except you are on the same team. Everybody in there except you going to each other's weddings. Everybody in there except you eating dinner together. Mm -hmm. So guess who the outsider is? You. Everybody mm -hmm. in that courtroom wearing the same jersey except you. That's why if I don't put on a vigorous defense, you don't know because you don't know what a vigorous defense is. If because I often hear people say, well, they just listen to the cop and 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 they just do whatever they want to do. Well, did you put in it? Nope. I literally have a video, it's, and it's the funniest thing to me because I did it on purpose. If you ever if you ever have an issue, do this first. That video has probably a thousand views. I've talked to at least 200 people that have watched it. I've always asked them, did you watch the video? Yes, yeah, I watched it. Man, I love it. I took notes and everything. Did you do it? No. Why? Because they're programmed to fear. Mm -hmm. They're pro they believe the programming. The problem is I wasn't, I, I always tell uh, <laughs> me and two of my sons, we were not born with the fear gene. We have a problem with that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't believe it like that. We, 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 you know, and it, and there's certain things because to me, I've learned to control that aspect of myself. My sons are still young and wild, so that's that's my fear because they don't have it. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess I grew one or something. I, I don't know. I guess the children put it in me. But Nutrition, whatever, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's like there is no fear. And that's why I have the conversation. This is how you get home. Because just like I was telling you before, one of the things I tell my kids, you can't get involved in an adult conversation. If a cop stops you, my father's name is, his phone number is. Well, what's your, well, would you, my father's name is, his phone number is. No, you don't have any conversation with him. None. And you have to prepare them for that. But at the same time, why should I have to prepare that, prepare my children for somebody that's a good person? Why would I have to prepare my children for somebody that's supposed to be respectable? Oh, because they have to earn it. Now, if they're doing the right thing, why are their body cameras never working? Happened to why do they never come to court? Here's a great one. I had a lawyer. He he got a ticket. It, it was actually, no, he got arrested. He got arrested um, because he was, you know, being a lawyer on the side of the road. Cop arrested him because he was mouthing off. <laughs> and it was, the, it was the funniest shit I'd ever seen. So he calls me because he saw my video and it looked great. I said, okay, cool. So we're talking, just having idle conversation. He goes, look, what would you do in this situation? I said, okay, who? This is what I would do. I send him a couple things, show him the video, do this first. And he goes, hey, what does your discovery look like? So I showed it to him. He goes, really? You asked for this? I said, absolutely. He said, even in my case, even in your case, just take this one off, take that one off, go. So he goes, He's a defense attorney. He had been doing it for five years. He had never filled out a complete discovery. But remember, you need a complete discovery for a vigorous defense. But anyway, I, you know, mm -hmm. because again, I talked about that. They don't care. Mm -hmm. Anyway, mm -hmm. he he does. It, the funniest thing is he was stopped for 30 minutes. He requested the body camera footage. Why? Because the police officer said he had body camera footage. He wrote it down in the police report. He got body camera footage. 18 seconds redacted and no audio of a 30 minute stop mm -hmm. that defense attorney changed his mind about how he was doing his job he is no longer a defense attorney guess what he also cannot do he cannot advise others on how to prepare themselves because he was part of the bar wow because piranha don't eat piranha so you that's what you do that people cannot do and what happens is most of the time, the stuff that I say, it sounds wild because I know it's about a thousand people that will see this and hear me and be like, yeah, that sounds crazy. And then it'll happen to them. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Not so crazy anymore, huh? And it's like it's like getting hit in the face with a brick. It's like some, wow, like some really. people and, you know, can't live vicariously; they just can't. It has to happen to everybody. Funny just because don't. I, I had a friend of mine. His mom kept telling him, "Look, don't be listening to that dude. Don't be listening to that dude." He, yeah, I know he did that. I did see that, but no, don't be listening to that dude. And then she saw it happen to her son. She was in the car when it happened to her mm -hmm. son. I told her it was going to happen to her son because part of what I do is manage expectations because everybody isn't meant to stand in the arena. Because even when I did, I did, uh, I read the poem, Man in the Arena. Everybody's not meant to be there. But I can prepare you to be a soldier. Everybody can't be a first sergeant. I can prepare you to get there. You still have to walk the walk to get there. Mm -hmm. I can prepare you. You still have to do the work. Yes, and stay. You know, you know, you know what I think a lot of it again. We think that everybody thinks like us. Absolutely. Thank you. That I wouldn't do this. So why would they do this to me? Universal and experience. Me, right. That yeah. the fact of the matter is, huh. don't trust anybody. Because you wouldn't do it does not mean that. Let me tell you something. Anytime I get stopped by a cop, I have two cameras on me. Because you're not going to catch me slipping like that. That is beautiful that you say that because I did a video. I did a video. I, I did three videos two years ago. And I said, if you're riding around, you're an idiot if you don't have it. Now, I mean, I mean it just the way I say it, because, again, they don't care about your color. They don't care about it is a war on the poor. Now, did I also did a video last year during the shutdown. Well, not last year during the shutdown, but last year. Mm -hmm. I talked about how they were going to come out of 2020 because they were not allowed to be attack dogs for some cases as much as nine months. So they were hungry. Last year was the most violent year for police of any calculated year. 1,055 police shootings that resulted in death last year, 2021. Now, when you spoke about the cameras, the video that I did, I spoke about if they tell you to turn it off and you turn it off, that is a Fourth Amendment violation because that deals with Terry v. Ohio because that is a show of authority stop. Because if they give you instructions absent of a crime, it is a seizure. Next part of that, if they tell you to turn it off and you turn it off, it is a First Amendment violation because they are allowed to be filmed doing their job. Mm -hmm. Three, most people have no clue why Facebook, um, what is that, Periscope, Instagram, and a few of these others have cloud-based savings. Police officers were deleting videos when they were exactly the they will destroy they the phone. They could not say that. So now, if they turn it off or destroy the phone, it is a federal crime. But you know I'm what? Say that what one more time. Think? I actually did the video. If they ask you to turn it off and you turn it off, or they ask you to delete it, it is a federal crime because you are now destroying evidence. My question to you: What about the cops now? That they play music, copyrighted music. Copyrighted music, so you can't order, in order so you can't publish it. Yeah. Here's a, you, that just means you can't get paid for it. Right. No, but YouTube would take it down. But that's what I'm saying. But it still gets saved. Unless they right. physically yeah. take it down, it still gets saved. You can still use that video for court. Right. You just can't monetize it. Right. Because I know we we were doing, we did a video. I don't know. We did a um a synopsis. It was the Wiz, wasn't it? It was the Wiz. We were doing a synopsis on the Wiz, and she played a video of Michael Jackson. Oh, and they right, took right, right. Yeah. Okay, okay. Mine's. Yeah. We were doing um Claudine, and they took my video down. And like I said, I I don't have access to it though. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you what happened. You ready? Yeah. I did a series. 100 nights of supreme zero to 100 if you go to my playlist right now there's not 100 videos in it okay <laughs> so just understand 
you are a problem. That's why they're so quick to copyright you. One day it was, it got to the point that where it was funny. My homeboy comes and picks me up from the airport and my phone keeps going off. Bling, bling, bling. Right. I look down and he, he starts laughing. He says, YouTube. I said, yeah. He said, they're taking your video. I said, yeah, they're trying. Yep. Because what happened was after I did, um, police encounters, right. I did another series. The series, I started naming these police officers. That's why I talked about Eddie T. Johnson. That's why I talked about Mayor Raheem. That's why I talked about um, right. all these obscure officers that most people didn't talk about. I talked about the um, Arizona Police Force, where they they were killing someone one they were killing one citizen every five days. They were the most violent police force in the United States, and the police chief said it was the citizens' fault for getting shot. It's your fault for walking in front of the bullet. And then I actually got taken off of Twitter because the young one of the young men said, well, I guess it was the um, five-year-old's fault for playing at the playground that was shot in the head by your police officer. I got I got attacked for bullying the police. Oh, I mean, you know, we've talked briefly about how I can't keep monetized. I can't keep on. I get everything pulled. I, it's, I, I see, cannot even advocate for, for any racism. But see, here's the here's the crazier part too, because what it got to the point was people asked me, "Are you doing this just for money?" And that's like absolutely not, because at some point it's about the message. So absolutely. I can say I can say f YouTube because I place them on Facebook, I place them on at least forty different platforms because it's about the message. I can't reach everybody, but everybody that I can reach, I'm reaching to. Mm -hmm. Now, if you call me, don't think I'm doing it for free. Right. That's what I want to talk to you about next. Kids. They like stupid shit like lights and food. So if I'm going to give you my time, you're going to you're gonna actually respect that. And at the end of the day, this is what I do. I'm, I'm like Deontay Wilder. I don't play law. This is what I do. I live it, breathe it. I read it. I'm studying constantly. I'm updating constantly. I'm watching. I'm watching for not only what's there. I'm looking for what's not there. I'm looking at what are they not showing us? They're having me look here. What, what's over here? Yeah. That's how I can tell you, oh, yeah, at that time, boom, this was happening. At that time, this was happening. Because most people don't know the Supreme Court actually makes a decision at least two to three times a week. Most people have no clue about that. I even talked about the Harvard reimbursement when they were talking about the um, they weren't um, racist because they're there are private prop there what do you call it private clubs you can't be racist if i'm private like i can bring in who i want to so how is that racist i don't want you here I don't and, have to and, you. and at works at jobs i think it's if you have less than 25 people EEO doesn't really apply to you or something to that effect yeah where you can hire who you want and mm -hmm. if you decide I'm not hiring any black people, hey, because yeah, even I spoke to somebody, one of my homeboys about the Crown Act because he has dreads. I told him, I said, when you go in, do me a favor. I said, wrap them damn things up. He goes, why? I said, one, you're intelligent. You're going to get the job if it's based off your intelligence. When you get there, you can go ahead and do what you need to do. Just keep it taped up like how you do. I said, but once they hire you, then you let your hair out. You can't go in there expecting them to hire you with your dreads hanging out. Now, is it is it something that is used against us that's technically for us? Absolutely. Because now I can say, no, look how his hair is. Look how, I don't want nobody with orange hair in, in my business. I don't want nobody with braids in my business. But now if you come presentable and because they use words like, Neat and presentable. That's an opinion. Absolutely. That's so how I'm that's a, how they stop um black women from having their natural hair. Absolutely. Because absolutely. Them, our hair was not neat and presentable. It's absolutely just because, unbelievable, but it's true. It's like absolutely if you're a new uh, you know a newbie with all this, like a white person trying to learn, you just this like blows your mind, but it's all true. Your because own again, like I say, hair, the way it grows out. And here's the crazy part though. 
even if you don't like anything I've said tonight, everything I've said, you can look up. That's the beautiful part about it. And I, and this one lady actually got upset with me and it was funny as shit because she goes, well, just cause you reading it from the website doesn't mean anything. I'm like, it's Harvard. Are you, are, are you mad at Harvard? Is that what we're having this conversation about? You're mad at Harvard. Or are you just mad that it's coming out of my mouth? I don't. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, mm-hmm. I learned, because I played basketball, one of the things I learned was good artists borrow, great artists steal. Guess what happens? I go look for the great. The best lawyers in the world come from Harvard. Guess where I did most of my studying? Harvard. And you know what the most beautiful thing is? They offer it free. Princeton offers their journal free. Cornell offers their journal free. But because it's free, people take no value in it. And this is where I come in at because you're going to pay for my time because I'm taking it by studying Princeton, Harvard, Cornell, even um, North Carolina, because most people didn't even understand what an Alfred plea was. Because you say there are no innocent people in jail. Guess what? What the Alfred plea does? It allows you to remain innocent while going to prison. It allows you to keep every appeal that you have by pleading to something because at the time you perceive that you don't have a way out. Right. It's it's just it's criminal. I mean, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I had a quick question. Um, this has been very, very enlightening. I could we keep you here forever. You're you're amazing. Um, I want to make it crystal clear for for people who are going to re, you know watch this and in, in, uh, later on. Um, you help get you give you give guidance to people Absolutely. about the about the law. And they pay you to for your time. And yes. what what are the main, you know, I guess classic type things that you do? Do you have any or is it everything always different? I mean, do you have certain set? What do you do? I want who can call you and you'll be like, absolutely come in, you know. Do you have any set stuff or all right? Uh I, I'm I'm fair because again, my thing is I don't care about um who's telling the truth. And I don't care about how it's presented, but I do need to know your story. Now I've helped, I've I've helped people with homeland security cases, which you know I later regret it because you know people don't like that, especially when you beat them. I've helped people with um, foreclosures. Classic, I've helped help them with yeah. divorce and child support, and even getting them off child support. Even I had a um, I had. A child custody issue. I've helped with those. Predominantly, because like I said, I had a couple of murder cases. Mm-hmm. I've had um live no, I had two. I had two. There we go. Two. I had two. Mm-hmm. I've um helped a guy in Virginia beat a gun case. I helped um I I generally don't do this, but I've helped a couple of people that had um had drug cases. And the one thing about it is any case, I don't care what it is, because the majority of the people that call me have some type of traffic issue. Damn near everybody, damn near everybody that calls me, they've called me because they were stopped at a traffic stop Mm -hmm. in some form. DUIs are easy. And like it's it's just certain things, because I've actually done a video about that. Because the whole thing is not telling on yourself. But when you talk to me, you tell me everything. But before you do that, you send me at least a dollar. You got <laughs> one dollar. You got to send me one dollar before you start. One dollar. Yes, because then, because I am labeled as a consultant or legal, um, legal counsel, mm-hmm. I can then have quote unquote attorney client privilege. There we go. That thank because you for if explaining. You just start talking to me. You in trouble. <laughs> mm-hmm. right 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 and so people can call you and and do you do have you ever done like police brutality stuff or police Absolutely, line? i do that all the time yeah i want to know actually, the stuff that you I mean you're i've actually i've actually the last the last one i've done um that was a police brutality case was down in you know texas is gonna get tired of me even though i love it um <laughs> it was down in um dallas dallas police officer um did what he do but I also had a um, I had a had a case where we ended up suing the state of Texas 
the district attorney, the prosecutor, and um, the police officer. We won all four aspects of that case. Now, it wasn't my case. So, you know, they sent me what they sent me. And, you know, but the numbers were ridiculous because it was right when the pandemic happened. But it was now the they're, they're changing a little bit because they're becoming more aggressive because they notice more people are more in fear of the things that they perceive that can be done. Because literally yesterday I had a friend of mine, he went for an arraignment, didn't enter a plea. He was going for discovery to pick up discovery. They had already picked a jury, not allowed him to pick Wadir. They had wow. picked the jury and said, yeah, you're coming to trial. He's like, hey, oh, how? Now, that's an easy one. It's an easy appeal because that's legal error because it's a violation of due process. Mm -hmm. But it's also malicious prosecution because it's a violation of due process. You didn't follow your own rules. And I often tell people that's where the, but again, that's where the process falls in. You put your foundation down first. That's what he did. He already laid the foundation. And what people cannot do is they can't argue with themselves because men lie, right. women lie, numbers don't. That paperwork right. doesn't. Right. Because even even the context of looking at dates, I've actually had had somebody they got they got a little frantic when they got arrested and requested a police report. They sent her a police report. When she put it in writing, they rewrote the police report because in her writing, she decided to add in her own stuff and start telling on herself. Because a lot of times people say, well, I'm going to write an affidavit. Here's my problem, because I'm a card player. Why would I tell you what's in my hand? And here's the greater part. If I have the right to remain silent and I don't have to participate in your investigation, why would I tell you anything? You are the one making the accusations. You are the only one that has to prove anything. Mm -hmm. And again, 6'4", 300 plus pounds. I'm a grown ass person. Why am I explaining anything anything to anybody else? I mean, and I always ask people, are you an adult? Yeah. When was the last time you explained yourself to anybody for the things that you've done? Alleged or otherwise. I don't I'm not in the I'm not in the business of explaining myself. Mm -hmm. Especially not to people I don't care about. Right. And you but know are the enemy. Yeah. You know, because I've actually had a cop. Um, I've actually had, you know, like I said, the the knee on the back of the neck, the 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 gun to the back of the head, normal stuff. I've actually had a police officer kick me in my face with that steel toe boot, and he thought it was cute. It was okay. Now I didn't handle that one in court, but at the end of the day, I I've learned to say a couple of things because again, if I know already, not an intelligent person. I'll ask them a couple of thinking questions. Most of them can't think. And they do one or two things. They either go back to their car or they get angry. Mm -hmm. That's it. Why? Because that's the response of an unintelligent person. It's fight or flight as well. I mean, that's exactly that's fight or flight. It's you're a primitive to, response. They're either going to think it's a primitive response. and go back to their car or they're going to get angry. Most of them are trained to be angry. Absolutely. Because they're trained to escalate the situation. Escalate. The problem is, again, I'm too big to be bullied and too stupid to run. I'm too fat, too. I'm not going to run nowhere. And most I've actually had cops tell me, well, because you're so big, I'll do this. I was like, no, you won't. I said, you know why? Because I'll beat you in court. I'll hit them pockets whenever we go to court because I'm taking you. I'm, I've learned not to talk to nobody's children. I go talk to their parents. I'm a grown person. I'm not going to talk. I'm not dealing with you at state court. I'm going I'm going, oh, uh-oh. So I've got to go because I'm on the phone with a client. Okay. So I just wanted to say it has been lovely. You're amazing. I appreciate please give, it. Please give Kim your contact information. She has it. We definitely will. She has all of that. Because yeah. I'll be calling you or emailing you soon, okay? Absolutely. All right. Y'all have a good night. And you Sasha, you're the best. We'll just wrap so it up. So you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, as always. 
Um, wow. So I guess <laughs> I didn't see her come on all of a sudden back on. I guess she, she has a client on the phone. Um, yeah, you, you are amazing. Um, I, I love what you do. I love that you can, unlike most attorneys, you can work in any state you want, right? Absolutely. And that's a huge difference because, because like I said, I've, I've, I've helped. I want to say I've been in damn near every, all 50 states except for like North Dakota or something like that. North and South. No, I haven't done anything in North and South Dakota. So I'm not, you know. <laughs> but yeah. But at the end of the day, because like I said, law doesn't change from state to state at all. Statutes calls ordinances do because what most people, because I actually have this dude that follows me. He's an attorney. And one of the things he talks about is the simple fact that when we're talking statutes, codes, and ordinances, we're not talking about law. We're talking about safety issues. The problem is even, the police don't even know that. Well, that, right. Because, you know, it's if you know knowledge is truly power, especially with this kind of thing. And if you want to turn the tables, if you know more than them, boy, oh, boy, can they. Can, can they get they'll be the fearful one. Because Absolutely. And see, like, I'm actually uh, the thing that I'm doing now um, as I'm going into 2022 is I'm working on a series called Weaponizing Your Defense, because at the end of the day, ain't no fun when the rabbit has a gun. Now, do I give you everything? No, nah, I'm not doing that, because, again, it's like handing a child a handgun. I can give it to you. You have no idea what to you how to use it. Right. Right. But I'm going to let you know that it's there. I'm going to put the safety on it, but I'm going I'm to let you know it's there. We had a quick question. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher your name by accident. Nicoletta, uh, are you admitted to all 50 states? Bars. Well, he doesn't have a bar card. Absolutely He's not an not. attorney. So that's that's the difference. He's not an attorney. He gives guidance on. Because law doesn't change. Law, issue, uh, you know, issues of the law. He is not an attorney. And those are the benefits of not being an attorney. He actually works for you. Absolutely. And that's a big difference. Um, I didn't get to all my questions, but um, I want to know, first of all, is the, the biggest thing, how can people get a hold of you? And of course I was going to tell them, but can you say it loud? <laughs> write it down. Well, the easiest way is to um, shoot me an email. Shoot okay, me an email. Richard, okay. Yeah. You can shoot, shoot them an email. Um, I think that'll probably be the easiest because I don't answer my phone. As you can see, it's been both of them have been sitting beside me, and I'm streaming you on one side, and the other one is just sitting here looking at me going off every ten seconds. Do you feel comfortable? Give Do you give your email out to the general Absolutely. public? Yes. So can yes. I can I just type it right in now? Absolutely. Um, which one is it? The or is it another one? You can actually use that one. Okay, you wanna the what was it again? Bad memory and here. Put ASM in the title. <laughs> no wait, it was um what was it again um the it was a funny saying the ghost of christmas past oh yeah the g uh, o c p oh, christmas p at gmail.com yep there we go yep the ghost of christmas past and those that like to read and know what that means uh-huh um the g o c p P at gmail.com and I will put oopsie, I sent it already. <laughs> you see it on there? Yeah, that's it. That's and right. Let me just get your name on there. Make sure I got everything spelled right. And I didn't get to all my questions, but I mean, you are amazing. Watch his videos, go to his channel, um, check it out. The channel is Supreme Decisions. The podcast is Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. And it goes live every Monday at 5 a.m. And one actually, the one I did today will go live tomorrow at 5 a.m. So if you're sitting in traffic and you feel like listening to me for another 30 minutes, handle your business. <laughs> uh, Richard, what's the name of that um, podcast that you said again? Say it slowly for the, for the old people here. Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. Oh, that's right. I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> Eastern, time Eastern Time Zone. He's in, Five Eastern. in Eastern, Eastern T, Eastern. He's in T. You're wonderful. He's he's in Eastern, like like I am, um, and like Anastasia is. 
And Richard, I hope that people come by. I hope they listen to you. You are amazing. I could talk to you all day. I know. <laughs> I appreciate it. And I'll start giving you both just to hear your stories. And um, again, I didn't get to everything I wanted to, but um, we got a wonderful feel for what you do. And you're the real thing. I and appreciate it. I love it. I'm thrilled to meet you. Just hopefully thrilled. we can do it again. Absolutely. I'm going <laughs> to You're gonna regret the day you met me. <laughs> I'll be calling you all the time. Have a great night. You are You too. I appreciate it. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Take care. Good night, everybody. Right. Thanks for being here.